Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, today I want to talk about making marks on lino. Now a lot of lino cut artists are really brilliant at cutting patterns and they use the lino to create lots of different shapes in their cutting um, and they have a different approach to me. My approach is very much to make a mark on the lino and cut around it. So in order to make those marks, I have a whole host of things that I use. Now you'll notice from the one that we're working with for this whole series of lino cuts, since I saw you, it has developed this great big splashy white amount of paint on it. And I quite often use paint rather than a pen for marking up the lino. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around the paint marks so that when I come to print, I'll be printing a lino cut, but it will look like brush marks. Now that really dates back to my residency in Japan, where I was uh, first residency in Japan, where I was learning about Japanese woodblock. And the uh, Japanese woodblocks are often the outlines are drawn with a brush rather than a pen. And also um, there's a sort of tradition of cutting um, Japanese writing, which is obviously with brushes, their calligraphy uh, in wood to look like brush marks. So I sort of fell in love with that. And I now use that quite a lot with my lino. The thing about a brush mark is it has a lot of energy in it. So you can see here for my sky, there's a terrific energy going on there, which is very hard to catch when you're drawing. So all I do to use um, paint on my lino is to use, I use cheap watercolour, cheap gouache, kids poster paint. It honestly doesn't matter, something water based. I tend to use white on the stained lino. Um, you could use other colours. I find white easy to see. And I just mix myself up a little bowl. And then I have a whole host of different brushes here. Um, so there are the Japanese uh, brushes that give a lovely kind of flowing line. And then there are household painting brushes. Again, these are really good. Um, other sorts of painting brushes. Actually, with brushes like this, cheap and cheerful, is often quite nice because one of the things that I like about the brush is how it splits into the sort of, um, it splits up the paint. So we'll look at how to cut a brush mark in a film um, in future. So I have a whole host of brushes and I use paint. Now, if you're very lucky, when you come to do your brush mark, it'll go on and you'll be happy with it doesn't usually happen like that. I can spend an hour or more trying to do the right brush stroke. So what I tend to do is I put my brush stroke on and I, wash, I wipe it off with a damp cloth and try again and try again until I get the shape that I want. So that's very much a kind of process of, of trying and trying until I get what I want. The other thing that I use all the time um, to mark up the lino when I'm working and to draw on the lino, a China graph pencils. Now, I don't know what you call them in the States. These are kind of greasy pencils that you use to draw and they will draw on glass and they'll draw on plastic, things like that. Now, um, I've got different colored ones here. This is, this is like a lead pencil, this one. And then I've got green and blue and my absolute favorite white. And this white pencil, um, if I show you on this bit of lino, it's nice and clear when you draw. And if you don't like what you've drawn, then you can just wet it, wet cloth and water, and it will just come off really, really easily. And you can go again. This is kind of nice when you start because when, one of the things when you're learning about lino is it's really quite hard sometimes to visualise how um, the lino will look, uh, the print will look rather than the lino. And because you tend to work from pale to dark, to begin with at least in lino cut, using a white pencil allows you to make marks and know that when you cut that mark out, 
that'll be the light area. So it's quite useful. The other thing about this is when the lino is drying, you get one sort of line. And then when the lino is a bit damper, let me just make it a little bit damper, then you'll get a more intense kind of line with it. So I sometimes use uh, the damp cloth to make the liner a little bit wet to get a sort of fatter, more intense line. Um, the colour bonds, they're absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I just tend to opt for white. It's quite handy to have different colours if you are marking up a complicated area and you want to split it up into groups. So um, those China Graph pens, you can get them on the internet. Um, there is a really good store called Cult Pens in the UK and they have a whole range of China graphs so they're a good a good place to have a look for those. So that's uh, China graphs. The other thing I use is dip pen and Indian ink. Now that is absolutely fine if your printing ink is oil based. If you use water based ink to print with do not use Indian ink it will be an awful mess because it will just flow once the water based ink gets on it. But if you're using oil-based ink, it works a treat. So Indian ink, and then I use dip pens. So here is a dip pen. I am very lucky in that I have quite a few nibs. There used to be an absolutely fantastic shop in London that was run by an elderly gentleman, and he was like the king of dip pen nibs. And I went in there with my mother-in-law, she took me, and we bought, he used to sell these little boxes called antique nibs where you kind of, it was potluck and you buy a box and in there would be all these dip pen nibs. So I choose myself a nib and I use that to draw with. And again, my process is to make a mark on the lino and then to cut around that mark. So I can draw with a dip pen and make my print look very much like a pen and ink drawing. So those are kind of the things that I use to make marks on the lino and all of them give a very different feel and I use them all together sometimes. Sometimes I only use one sort of mark making. It just depends on what I want. But anyway, that gives you an idea of how I arrive at the um, guide for my cutting. And in another video, we'll look at the actual process of cutting the lino. So thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again.